No, no, wait, wait there. Hold the phone. This cannot do. This is not fair. Uh, if the Doctor is allowed to break the fourth wall, which, to be honest, I do a lot, uh, and revamp his titles, then so am I. So prepare for a little revamp of the titles. Enjoy. <laughs> people of the internet and welcome back to another nerd central video in today's video i'm going to be telling you my thoughts on uh the fourth episode of doctor who series 9 which is doctor who before the flood now a few notes before we go on first of all uh the reason that this is a bit late is i've had quite a bit of college work to do so that's just been taken a priority because it is the priority but yeah, I'm sorry it's a bit late, but at least it should be getting out before uh, the girl who died, I think it is. But yeah, uh, I'm actually going to do, be splitting this one up into a few parts, because I thought it's a better format to do it. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on the story, then my thoughts on the characters, uh, and then a conclusion, and I might throw in what I thought about the directing and the music and like the actors and that. So yeah, what do I think of the story? Well, I liked it. I thought it followed on quite well from last week's episode, because last week's episode was sort of more of a building part, like it had the ghosts and it was building up the mystery of the ghosts and that. Whereas this one was a lot more answering and we actually got to see like the source of how it all happened and we actually got to see what the reason for these ghosts were and it was very cool actually sort of seeing in that reasoning but first of all we've got to talk about one main bit that has been very dividing among the fan base which is the opening title sequence Belongan. uh it was very odd and if you know anything about my taste in doctor who and anything in general i liked it i loved it in fact because it was sort of a very a risky move breaking the fourth wall again because i don't think that's been done since like tom baker and william hartnell's evers uh and i can see why it could put some people off because it does seem a bit like oh the breaking the fourth wall that shouldn't really be in doctor who but i don't actually quite mind it that's that uh that much because you got some fantastic acting for uh, from peak capaldi Basically, the Doctor giving us a hypothetical situation of uh, what would happen, not about, like, Beethoven and just basically explaining a bootstrap paradox and how I'd explain that is I actually see that as either what's going on in the Doctor's head when he's explaining to Clara about the paradox and, you know, how he solved the ghost, or I see it as a scene that happens after the episode ends between the Doctor and Clara, and yes, so uh, I sort of like to think of it like that, because if it were just breaking the fourth wall, and that's not that good on its own. But yeah, so I did like that scene. Uh, yeah, and I thought the story was quite well paced, in fact, because I like the fact that we actually uh, got to see a split between the two main stories, because we got to go from the sort of uh, stuff at the base, which there wasn't as much of that this time like there wasn't like the the ghost posed quite a bit of a threat with them they were quite intimidating for the little bits they got but there wasn't like those running away from ghosts in this one uh there was a bit but uh we got to see a split between that and a split between this stuff with the fisher king and i really did like that uh what we actually saw of it that's something i'll get on to later but yeah i thought it was quite cool how we like got to see a bit of Clara's uh, selfishness again in this because like when the doctor says that he's going to die and oh well it had to happen soon and I like that about the 12th doctor he's not like he does spend a little bit of time like I have to die but he doesn't like mellow over it for the whole episode he like 
says it and then he says, well, it has to happen sometime. Whereas other doctors might have been a bit more like, no, 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 I have to prolong it and just get a phone call about someone and then change my mind. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, I, I actually kind of like how we get to see a bit more Clara's selfishness. And it's sort of setting up her leaving, which I really do like. But yeah, uh, I do like how we did get to see a lot more uh, of the mortality rate in this. Like, the Fisher King straight up kills O'Donnell. And I think that's quite cool, seeing him not just uh, because he needs to. He's just thinking, ah, you look nice. Uh, I need to get my people here. Bang, just shoots her and kills her. And I really do sort of like the stuff with the Fisher King, because... Uh, I do think it's a really cool concept, this like alien being wanting to bring his like uh, armada to invade the planet and rescue him. So basically he's using the souls of the dead as like transmitters. And I really do sort of like that plot point. But something that I do like in this is that we get a lot more uh, character development with like the rest of the characters. Like we get quite a bit with Bennett uh, when he and O'Donnell with like... You get to see how O'Donnell's a really big fangirl of the ta of the Doctor and the TARDIS and how she knows, you know, like, a lot more about the actual, like, Doctor and that because she mentions uh, Martha, Amy, Harold Saxon, all of that. And she even mentions some of that I think might come up later in the series, who, which is the Minister of War, whatever that is. And, yeah, I think that's a really cool sort of development. And when she actually died, we're actually like, oh, no, I liked O'Donnell. But yeah, I think Bennett, I think her acting was quite good, but Bennett's acting, uh, the guy who played Bennett were fantastic, like, where you could actually see that he did actually love this O'Donnell, and he's so angry, like, when he actually, you know, finds her dead, and he actually accuses the Doctor of just using her, like, as a experiment, and I sort of like that side of the Doctor coming out a bit more. It reminds me a lot more of Seven in that respect, and yeah, I really do like that. Uh, I also like the bits at the base, like where they're like stuck in the Faraday cage and they have to try and get the phone to contact the doctor. And they're basically waiting on the doctor, but like when you get Cass going out and you get to see how much she's scared that Lung might get hurt because she's like, no, don't go out and all that. It is really co sort of cool to see that. And uh, you get to see like that wonderfully directed shot in which she's walking down the corridor. And she's being followed by that guy with the axe. And it's really cool how they use the fact that she's deaf to sort of create suspense. Because she can't hear the axe being dragged along the floor. And I did think for a minute that she was actually going to be killed. But she actually uses what I call the daredevil sense to sort of sense it. And it is sort of really cool to sort of hear that. It, I mean, see it, it's sort of really, really cool, I think. Uh, one thing that I'm not so keen on is how the Fisher King, as much as he did get quite a bit of time in the story, he didn't get as much time as I thought he should have, because I think the Fisher King was such a cool villain for what we saw of him, like he should have got a lot more screen time, and yeah, he, he had a really good intimidating presence when he was on screen, but he should have just been used for a lot more of it, and they were trying to keep what he looked like a secret, but with the art, but with the marketing department, that just didn't work because they just spoiled it by having it in like the trailers and that. And yeah, I uh, didn't really like how we didn't get that much of the Fisher King. Uh, and yeah, I didn't really like that bit because I think we should have had a lot more because he had some potential. But I also think that the resolution, uh, I don't know. I mean, I sort of do like it because it's sort of things in uh, pa uh what's it called like the bootstrap paradox now paradox theory quite well like yeah the doctor got inspired to have the idea about the ghost because he saw the ghost but what gave him that idea in the first place i sort of like that use of paradoxes but because it's a bit of a mind-boggling situation compared to what we used to it could confuse people i mean i had to watch it a few times before i really understood it but yeah, uh, that's one thing that I have to say is that this episode could have been a bit off-putting to new viewers because if they watched last week, they're like, what you like that? Why is that? And uh, I'm not so sure about all the hologram things. I always thought, wouldn't the ghost be able to tell that Peter Capaldi's like, ghost is a hologram? And I don't know about that. I suppose it makes sense, but wouldn't the ghost surely be able to tell if it's a hologram? 
and yeah, uh, the conclusion, it was mind boggling, it's quite clever, but not very uh, welcoming to some people, like, some people might not just get the paradox stuff, and also, the bit with the sonic glasses, sonic glasses like, where uh, it's a hologram, I'm a bit, like, I uh, don't know about that, but sort of, I do like the ending, I don't think it had a bad resolution, I just think it had a bit of a mind boggling one, and it took a few rewatches to sort of fully understand. Now, as for the main characters in this, the Doctor, played by Peter Capaldi, is awesome in this, he's absolutely fantastic. You get to see what he'll be willing to go through to protect Clara, like sacrificing O'Donnell's life just to test the theory, and also when he uh, will, willing to break the rules to sort of save himself and Clara, but when that doesn't finish, he goes back to confront the Fisher King. I really do sort of like that uh, sort of side to the Doctor, because he is still quite joking and that. But we sort of get set to see him more serious again, and it is quite cool to see that, how like he goes, you messed with the rules of life and death. Your story ends here. I really do like that. I also think that we get quite a bit for Clara in this, as when we actually see her, we get to see a lot more of a selfish side to her. Has she actually sort of like, is like, no, you can die, but wait till the it's with the person who comes after me and yeah she sort of plays that quite well and we get to see a lot more of a selfish side to her which I sort of do like I will get more character development for the supporting cast oh Donald's all right as I said I really do like how the actress plays her in this she's sort of the typical Doctor fangirl but yeah I sort of like her even though she doesn't get as much but it's sort of cool how she doesn't scream when she sees the Fisher King so she sort of just gets shot and yeah, it sort of makes her seem as like a more stronger survivor character. I really do like her. Uh, as for Benny, I think he's quite cool in this. He gets quite a bit of development with how he see how he actually, uh, from the looks of it, he loved O'Donnell. And like, she basically dies in his arms and he confronts the Doctor and that's really cool. And like how he tells Lun at the end to tell, what's it called, Cass that he loves her before it's too late. I really do sort of like that aspect and I think the actor plays in quite well. And as for Lun and Cass, the actors for them are brilliant as always. Sophie Stone's fantastic as Cass. I mean, not letting her like actual de deafness uh, impact her ability to be a strong character at all. It's really cool. And now she's telling Clara to basically F off all the time. It's really funny. And like the lung guy is awesome, like he's actually like uh, going out risking himself to sort of get the phone back. Uh, it's really cool and we get to see him and uh, Cass get together and I really do like that because you can sort of tell that they were close to each other which I do like. Uh, just a few notes, the directing in this for fantastic da Daniel O'Hara I think it is, needs to return as he is absolutely brilliant. Uh, yeah, I think he's fantastic uh, at directing that. Some of the shots like where we're dragging the axe across the floor were really suspenseful and I actually thought that he was actually going to get cast, that guy. And yeah, I really do like the directing in this. The music's also fantastic for Mirigold as well. And we have to mention the rock title theme. It's quite cool. I mean, how actually the like Beethoven's fifth like rock music fades into the actual titles. And yeah, I do like that. I just wish they would have actually composed the full piece, you know, for the rock music. Like from what I could gather in my ears, it was just like dubbed over the actual title sequence music. Maybe they could have composed a new piece, but yeah, I did like it anyway. So yeah, uh, for most things in this episode, they are positive, but as I said, I have a few negatives, like the Fisher King not being used as much, and I think that uh, like the ending of it could be a bit mind-boggling on the first few watches and does require a bit more concentration to uh, listen to and to sort of understand, but yeah, apart from that, everything was good. So yeah, as for my uh, final conclusion on this story, what do I think? Well, as I said, I think that Before the Flood is a fantastic uh, second half to the Toby Whitehouse two-parter. It had some fantastic scenes. It had, uh, like, with the Doctor 
Clara, the Fisher King, the ghost, them scenes were all fantastic. The acting in it were perfect from Peter Capaldi, Jenna Coleman, Sophie Stone, all the rest of them. The Fisher King was awesome and intimidating, even though I didn't get that much sort of screen time and what's it called. I think the I do like the sort of uh, use of the bootstrap paradox in a story because I really think it is cool how it's sort of a clever sort of context and it also leaves a few questions open like who was really behind them thoughts of the ghosts and that but it could be a bit uh, mind boggling to get your mind round which could hamper some people's enjoyment but after a few watches I don't really mind it but yeah, as for Before the Flood, I give it a solid 8 out of 10, a good episode, just a few things that I didn't like. And for the two-parter in general, I give uh, Before the Flood and Under the Lake an 8 out of 10. Uh, this has been another Nerd Central video, thank you for watching. Uh, what were your thoughts on the story? Comment them down below, I'd love to have a chat with you about it. Do you agree with anything I said? If you don't, comment down below. As I said, I'd love to have a chat with you. Uh, click the subscribe button here. There should be a bar around here. Uh, to get all my sort of content. Uh, and just see my videos in your little news feed. Uh, check out the Twitter page in the description. I think I'll put it in the description. Check out the Twitter page if you want to see what I'm up to myself. And just want to see what I'm retweeting and crap just basically like that uh, check out the Facebook page or group if you want to see exclusive access to what's coming because I might post exclusive updates like thumbnails and etc on that and yeah this has been Nerd Central thank you for watching and I'll see you next week hopefully if I'm not got a lot of cool stuff on <laughs> or I'll see you next week with a review of the girl who died goodbye my dears Oh, oh there, hello people of the internet, Nerd Central here again. Uh, I know you thought that was probably the end of the video, but I just remembered I forgot to tell you something. Uh, as of uh, the 100th video, we're on video like 90 I think now, but as of the 100th video, as a celebration for that, I shall be doing a sort of, uh, not a celebration week, but... Sort of from video 100 to 110, there shall be all big uh, celebration videos and in the coming uh, few videos I shall be announcing what those videos are. So yeah, look out for that anytime soon because I'm still finalising them. But yeah, uh, sorry about this little break in your schedule going off and doing whatever. But yeah, I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Roll the credits.